Uh, I got an awesome announcement. We bought a campground. <laughs> Just closed uh, not too long ago. And I wanted to put together this video and just talk through it a little bit with you because it's kind of a really big change in the type of investing and work that I've been doing. And it's going to be a huge change for my family. So wanted to share that with you, talk through it. And for those that are interested, uh, hopefully provide some more insight. So in this video here, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the property that we bought because we'd love to have you all come and visit. Uh, Want to talk about why we're expanding outside of multifamily investing, why we're so excited about the campground industry and ultimately why we're investing in it. And then ultimately circle back and just tell you about our goals and where we're looking to move beyond just this one property because as those who know me probably understand, uh, I don't have my eyes set on just one property. Uh, I, I have a much larger vision as to what I'd like to create. So without further ado, the property. We just purchased Warblers Cove uh, in Lupton, Michigan. It's near West Branch. Uh, which is uh, just a couple hours north of the Detroit MSA. It's a beautiful property, 610 acres. There's four lakes on the property, currently over 200 sites. Uh, it's, it's a really special piece of property, and I can't wait to get my family up to it. Uh, believe it or not, Nicole was okay with me purchasing this property. She hasn't even been to it yet. So uh, kudos to her for trusting me and uh, hopefully she likes it. But anyways, that's enough about the property itself. Uh, I'm going to be sharing a bunch more in the coming months and over the years on everything we're looking to do at the property. We're changing the website. We're going to be looking to improve the property. All the buildings are going to get facelifts. We're going to add sites. We're going to build cabins. Uh, new event spaces, build beaches, playgrounds, I want to do some tree houses. Uh, so there's going to be lots of exciting things to come with the property and I'll be looking to share a lot of it with you. So why do we buy a campground? Why are we expanding outside of multifamily? Uh, well, a couple of things. So I've been looking for uh, an investment opportunity outside of multifamily. Because for those who understand multifamily, they know that it's kind of a cash poor business. The cash flow is generally not very lucrative. You're really looking at five to seven or eight uh, percent of your total investment that you can expect to get as a cash on cash return, cash flow in any given year. Yes, you can do better over time, but cap rates have substantially uh, declined in the industry or compressed. That's great for valuations. It's not great for cash flow. I still believe in multifamily. We have an active uh, opportunity that we are working to get closed here. So I'm going to continue to invest and grow in that business. Wholeheartedly believe in it and that's not changing. But I'm looking for something else to help achieve my family's financial goals and hopefully uh, help achieve the goals for others who are going to invest along with us in this. So that's a big component is, is cash flow. Now I've looked at uh, laundry mats. I've looked at window manufacturers, uh, granite uh, fabricators and installers. I've looked at specialty niche construction companies. Uh, looked at software applications and businesses that I could buy. There's been a lot of research that has gone in over the years. I've talked with countless individuals who own businesses, who have gone down to other niches, and ultimately I landed on campgrounds. And ultimately I think they're great investments. And here are some of the top reasons why I think campgrounds are so exciting and ultimately why we decided to write some big checks to uh, go and invest in them. First up, it's commercial real estate. So 
I understand that world pretty well given my multifamily background. Uh, the valuation metrics are very similar. A lot of the relationships and standard practices on how to buy and close these uh, businesses are, are very similar to what I've been doing in the multifamily space. So that works really well for me and it substantially decreases the learning curve, uh, which is a good thing. So definitely that is a strength that I'm able to play off of based off of the work that I've been doing in multifamily. One of the great aspects about campgrounds is cash flow. So we're expecting to cash flow anywhere from two to four times more in these campground properties, RV resorts, when compared to a similar priced multifamily asset. Again, my goal was to get into an industry that I could see stronger cash flows as compared to my multifamily investments for the same dollars that I'm gonna invest. And based on what I'm seeing, I believe that to be so. Ultimately, for those who understand uh, some of the more nuts and bolts of multifamily or other commercial real estate, when we're buying multifamily today, in some markets, three, four cap, but where I invest generally five to seven caps, campgrounds, on the other hand, we're purchasing at eight to 12 caps. And we're getting similar financing on these assets when we're going out to commercial lenders uh, through the local community regions that we're purchasing. So very similar financing to multifamily at 20 year amortizations, low rates. And we're buying at substantially higher cap rates, which means more cash flow. The other component is cash flow cycle. So as I've looked at numerous businesses, cash flow cycle has been an important consideration. Uh, it's common in some businesses to not get paid until 30, 60, or 90 days after you perform the work. And in some cases, you had to order material and have expenses 30, 60, 90, 120 days in advance of actually being able to put together a product and deliver it. So some businesses have terrible cash flow cycles. Campgrounds are some of the best that I have ever seen. You are getting 30 to sometimes 70% of your cash as much as 12 months in advance of having to deliver that product. Now, that is really special. So for the campground that we're purchasing, we've already collected over 30% of our revenue for 2022 and 2021. And that's gonna increase in future years as we work to shift the way that the contracts uh, are handled to align more with the uh, industry norms. So cash flow cycle is huge and that's a, a massive benefit in the campground space as opposed to other industries and compared to multifamily. Definitely happy about that metric. And that was a big, uh, big impactful consideration when looking at this industry. Another thing that I love about the campground space is the different types of customers that we get to go out and provide services to. You have seasonal customers. It's very common in the RV world for people to buy seasonal sites. Most of us might think of camping as you hook up your travel trailer, fifth wheel, hop in your RV, and you're going out for a weekend, maybe a few weeks at a time. Well, a bunch of the industry is actually people that rent their sites, much like a marina slip for a large boat. They spend two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 to have a dedicated campsite for the entire summer. It's an extremely affordable way of having a vacation home. And it's very often that people have other family members and friends that end up getting the campsites nearby them. And it's a way for people to get together, build wonderful memories, and have a great connection 
to a place that they think is pretty special to them. So the seasonal customers provide a very stable uh, annual customer base with typically very low turnover, anywhere from 5 to 15%, which is pretty low turnover, especially compared to multifamily, when oftentimes we can see turnover of 20 to 30% per year. Overnight customers, and that's what I had mentioned in, in talking through the difference of seasonals, well, that's people who are traveling through the area just looking to find a, a nice place to go to for the weekend. Uh, you get to tap into those customers. Ideally, the sites that you dedicate to your overnight customers end up producing more revenue per site than your overnight customers. They take a little more work, people coming and going all the time. So if you get 3,000 for your seasonal site, ideally you should be generating four to 5,000 in revenue off of your overnight site for the additional revenue that you generate. And that makes the work more worth it. Cabins. Cabins are a really exciting component. The particular property we're buying doesn't have any. This is a huge area for growth and it's common as I've been analyzing properties around the country to have as much as 30, 40 or 50 percent of the overall revenue generated on properties coming from cabin like uh, cabin like product, whether that is a, a park model. Think of a tiny house, something that's mobile and, and can be brought onto the property. Glamping tents are huge, and there's some amazing examples of boutique motels or tree houses, and I mean like houses that are built into trees. They're pretty cool. Uh, the sky's the limit. It, it, we can get as creative as we want with providing this additional type of product, and it allows people who don't have an RV to come in and still get that really unique experiential um, you know, product and get to enjoy the land that uh, these RVers are at. You also get to do some cool things with RV parks uh, and campgrounds. Think of events. It's very common to have wedding venues. Sometimes concerts get hosted at these properties and other people coming in for parties. Uh, there are places that do family reunions. They even have sections where large groups can come in and block off 20, 30, 40 sites and host a big family reunion and they do it on an annual basis. Uh, that's a really cool, unique thing that we're able to tap into in this industry, which you don't typically see stuff like that happening in the multifamily space. And finally, the last area that I like to kind of talk about is the experiential uh, horseback riding, think canoe rentals or tube rentals for doing river floats. Some have water parks that you can come into for the day to, to you know, spend 10, 15, $20. Some have uh, the water bounce parks out on the lake. It's really interesting to see what these properties look like around the country and the different ways they generate revenue from camp stores and um, apparel to partnering with, with other vendors who can come in and provide different services, restaurants, bars on properties. Uh, there's a ton of different revenue streams and anything you can come up with that people are willing to pay for essentially you can do. So it's so much more than simply renting out a pad for the season or the night because this truly is, a, it, it's, a, it's a resort and you can take it as far as you want or keep it as simple as you'd like. So from my standpoint, I really like the uh, avenues that we can run down for growing and scaling in this business. The last thing from my standpoint that I love about the campground space is it's scalable. So just like multifamily, it's scalable. You can build as big of a business as you'd like. You can do that in the campground space. Most campground RV resorts that I'm typically seeing 
sell in the one to five million dollar range. However, you start seeing more and more properties that are selling in the 10 plus million dollar range. These are larger properties, they're well ran, they have good systems and teams in place. And from my standpoint, that's exciting. So if you own five properties that are each worth over $10 million, you know, you've got yourself a 50 to $70 million business. And there are examples of properties that sell for over $50 million. So it's a really unique space from that standpoint where it is scalable and we can grow this as, as much as we'd like. So there are operators out there that have campground portfolios well over $100 million, $200 million portfolios and a couple that have multi-billion dollar RV park portfolios. Our goal in this space is to provide premium destination outdoor resorts. We're starting with one property, but our goal is to expand and build a team of A-class people who want to grow this vision and build these fantastic properties and kind of see where this thing goes. So to do that, we set up a $5 million investment fund that we can continue to raise money to buy these projects over the coming years. And for other people who are accredited investors, they have the opportunity to uh, invest with us in building this vision. So I'm pretty excited for uh, the opportunities that are to come, the changes that this is going to mean for my family in building this business. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited. So... Uh, if you want to talk more, learn about what we're doing, if you're a credit investor, want to potentially get involved in investing, would love to talk with you. And uh, most importantly, we'd love to get you out to the properties and hopefully allow you to have the opportunity to build some great memories. Because that's also a part of it is for myself and Nicole, we looked at our life goals and we looked at the things that were important to us. And some of the best memories we have is when we're traveling on our fifth wheel and getting a chance to see the country and build family memories. So if we can be a part of that for others, uh, that's a pretty special thing to put our time, effort, and money into. So without further ado, uh, Happy to announce the purchase of Warblers Cove. Thank you to our investors that got involved in this first deal. And I look forward to providing more updates to you all in the future. Happy New Year and talk to you soon.